Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2016 exclusive coverage from SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante and our next guest is Bobby Patrick, CMO of the Cloud Enterprise Group at HPE and Michael Loomis, Head of Sales at Global Enterprises at, at Nuage Networks, part of, now part of Nokia. That's right. Welcome back to theCUBE. Welcome for the first time. Thank you very much. You made the CUBE Alumni Club. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very, very, very now. Now. I get my card yeah. when I leave. I got like a platinum <laughs> membership now, no? We're going to have a VIP. Yeah, you know, something. Yeah, after six times, you get a platinum card. <laughs> we, we, people want to have a CUBE Alumni event at these events, so it's going to be fun. Next oh, year, I like we'll, that. We'll, we'll look at that. Yeah. Uh, Bobby, I want to um, get touch base on the cloud. You, obviously, you run the cloud group, right. and Nokia is a customer of you guys. Obviously, HP, everyone knows the history, had right. the public cloud, they kind of pivoted over, and now you guys found your swim lane. I right. want you to just take a minute right. to clarify and reamplify what we talked about last uh, right. time in London around HP's cloud strategy. It's yeah. not like it's not defined, and you guys have a clear line of sight. Right. Take a minute to just share your vision and the, specifically the company's cloud strategy. Yeah, th thanks John, it's great to be here again. Um, you know, cloud is the catalyst for our customers' transformation and our partners. Uh, and we've got 24 here at Discover on stage showcasing Helium at, Helium at work. And our, I've been here two years now, and our cloud strategy couldn't be any more on fire and, 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 and working. There's three prongs to it. The first one is we want to help customers in a multi-cloud world. Source, manage, and consume cloud services tr across traditional IT, private, managed, and public, right? We saw the Azure partnership before. Uh, we have Dropbox now as well and others. So we're demonstrating that. Second one is we want to partner with the leading public clouds as well. So you mentioned the public cloud we used to have in the past. Now we're, 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 we're focused on that part of the right mix of our customer's cloud strategy on public cloud partnerships. So you see that with Microsoft Azure, specialty clouds like Interlinks around document collaboration, you know, doc, Dropbox, so all examples of that we're demonstrating around partnering with public clouds. And the third one is we want to integrate our solutions with those clouds as well. So managing that multi-cloud world, it's complex. Working with companies like Nokia, we're taking Helian and Helian OpenStack and Helian Cloud Foundry. We're layering on it called cloud orchestration, which we now bundle as our Helian Cloud Suite today. And we pull in public cloud, we pull in managed, private and traditional IT into one single solution for our customers. So you mentioned Azure, and there's nothing in the announcements this morning that mentioned Azure. Is that the previous relationship? Is that right, we announced our partnership with Azure last Discover. This one, there's a number of announcements just showing it at work, right? Our managed cloud broker offering, and cloud brokerage is a really big deal now for CIOs trying to manage a multi-cloud world, now extends to Azure. So there's a lot of those announcements you're going to see throughout Discover uh, with Azure, and there's going to be some other cloud announcements as well. Well, we'll get to the um, eucalyptus AWS relationship kind right. of later, but I want to sure. ask you specifically around the strategy and how you see the cloud enabling delivery. And on the opening I mentioned, Dave was asking about my views on HP's growth, and I right. kind of used the story of back in the old days of the mini computers, this little laser jet attachment to a Wang system was a major growth engine for HP right. and the rest of history. So we're kind of looking at the cloud and saying, okay, yeah. is IoT that bolt onto the cloud that is going to lift up where cloud becomes obviously pervasive like mini computers and then distributed computing did. How are you guys enabling things like IoT? Right. Because now the hybrid cloud, public, private data center right. is integrating together. Right. Do you see that as an integration into the cloud and, and you enabling those kinds of things? There's actually two big kind of growth axes that I think are important, right? One is you mentioned IoT, so the number of devices connected, the amount of data, just huge orders of magnitude growth. You've got to actually drive costs down and things as well to be part of that. And so that's a big deal. IoT universal platform that we announced as well. Helium is a back end for that, so massive scale on OpenStack, on our cloud line servers or others, so you get that maximum economics. You know, with Nuage and others spreading across multiple data centers for availability. We have that platform for IoT. But I think from a growth and margin, when you look at the new HPE now, right, the lighter, nimbler, stronger, when I layer on our security products, security is the number one concern our customers have going to, going to cloud. You know, ArcSight being able to do threat detection across a hybrid cloud, right? right the ability to do uh, encryption with our data secure product, right? Bringing in our big data products like Vertica for the columnar data, data store and our, and our work around Hadoop for distributed R, right? When you begin to bring those pieces into the fold, right, you, you, you begin to have the ability to add on top high value software and services, uh, more of the stack, you know, obviously infrastructure across the bottom. So what I see is us growing share of wallet, uh, growing our strategic relevance by, 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 both, by both handling the massive amounts of data that's being generated, uh, supporting the connected world, but also security, 
uh, uh, managing that data, big data, fast data, and providing that full stack on top. And we're bringing all those pieces together. In the past, HPE kind of had these siloed BUs in a way, right? Not anymore, all these pieces are coming together and that's a big part of my, my organization's responsibility. So Michael, talk about where Nuage fits in, what's the relationship, where do you guys add value? So Nuage is a, what we call a software-defined networking product. Uh, it's born out of some routing technology that we've had for uh, a number of years. Uh, we started our uh, router product back in uh, 2001 and uh, we're uh, number one or number two depending on the category in service provider edge routers. And when you look at the, the problem of scale out and flexibility in the cloud, you need some complex network constructs that may not be ready of, readily available in some of those cloud tools. And obviously you can't go throw an expensive service provider edge router at that problem. So what we did is we took that software, used that as a SDN controller to manage the forwarding tables of the virtual switches or the namespace in the case of Linux container, integrated that into uh, the uh, a distribution or a cl cloud system like Helion, and there you go, you've got a, a stack that can scale out at the network layer and at the computer. Oh, the VMware layer. killer. As, yeah. as a solution. <laughs> That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> I was going to say that. Pat Kelsinger um, always talked about um, network, and he's so proud of, of his acquisition of the STN player in the Sierra, which is a part of uh, VMware. But Dave and I always saw, always saw that the network was the bottleneck. You're seeing Aruba yeah. out there. Yep. Specifically, talk about where the network piece fits in and why that's so important right now with the cloud. You mentioned some technical things, but is it, is it really the DevOps enabler? Is it about the containers? Is it about the microservices, all of the above? What's the key well, issue? Network is important for scale. Anytime you want to go multi-data center or uh, hybrid or you want to secure your applications, you got to have an, a, a, an advanced networking solution or an SDN solution. What's driving that scale, you know, we approach private cloud a few years back. We had the stack, we were putting it together. We got nice production pilots up in the customers. And then we found that a lot of the applications weren't built to consume the flexibility and the scale out that we delivered with that private cloud. So these enterprises are going back and they've got new applications that are coming on that are microservices oriented architectures, cloud native applications and they can consume this architecture and they're starting to, it's not just IOT, it's lots of applications that are re-looking at how to take advantage of this infrastructure that's being built and that spreads across multiple data centers and part of the hybrid cloud, which is why uh, yeah. solid networking solutions are yeah. important. It's absolutely critical to have good networking. Let's get to the DevOps question. Obviously the big yeah. thrust is yeah. workloads. One of the things you guys talked about in your announcement this morning was obviously workload management, having the ability of flexibility, right. composable infrastructure, yada, yada, yada. I got it, Michael, you're, the, you're developing this stuff. And the thing that Dave and I hear in Wikibon community from customers is, Make it easier for me. The total cost of ownership is out of control. It's super hard to do this. How does this get easier? How are people managing through the complexity to make it simpler? And how are they managing the total cost of ownership? Helion. So that's just why it's important <laughs> for us. Uh, because we come in and we have a lot of great networking technology, but people are not going to consume that networking technology in and of themselves. They, they need a integrated, complete stack that's supported, installs quickly, and has an orchestration layer on top that's going to allow it to scale the, Give scale an example. the full set. Give an example besides just saying Helion. What specifically about Helion makes it simpler and lower cost? So when you look at uh, Helion, one uh, great tool set they built together is an installer tool set. And so there's nice scripting that's going to take, when you look at a cloud, you've got OpenStack components, you've got your Cloud Foundry components, you've got your networking components, storage components, and to have all of that stuff install and deploy seamlessly and scale out as demand is required, that doesn't come off the shelf if you're going to self-integrate some of these open source projects. So that, the support and service that's added with Helion, and then if you look at the CS layer on top to manage all the components and integrate in with uh, some of the public clouds, that's what takes the technology stack from being a great set of standards and a great set of open source products that can now be consumed. Well, Dude, you know, so the installation was the biggest barrier OpenStax had for a long right. time, right? how complex it was to install at scale, right? So I think that something well, we cracked. And it takes it from a stack of technology right. to something that actually solves a business That's problem. That's correct. Right. So that business problem is IT labor. Right. That's it, right. That's right. Non-differentiated provisioning or patching or so. And talk about the shift that's going on within that sort of labor pool from stuff that gives you no competitive advantage yeah. to where we are today or where we're headed. We used to go into uh, proof of concepts and the customer would uh, 
one of two types. They'd either have an OpenStack expert in there, someone who had lived and breathed it and was yeah. part of the original community, and they would work with us to get the initial stack up and running. A guy. A guy. <laughs> or we would have to bring that guy to the table, and they'd get somebody that was trying to be that person. We'd help them stand up OpenStack at the same time we'd go in with Nuage. We knew that wasn't going to work. So that's when we started partnering strongly with partners like Helion who can come in and make that work for the enterprise. And if you're in a CIO's position, you don't want to be dependent on one or two OpenStack experts that you've got to make sure stay, or you've got to hire an army of OpenStack engineers. What you want is a private cloud that works and a trusted partner to deliver it for you, but you want the openness and the standards-based attributes of a product like Helion, so you know you can plug other pieces of the environment in. So that's, it's really well, important. And Dave, Open. just you know, the average, the average customer that we have today has one engineer for every 240 virtual machines. With Helium Staccato 4.0, which we're rolling out, we believe we can get that to one to 500. And that's because you've got a universal control plane where you've got a single pane of glass basically across all the clouds, Azure, AWS, OpenStack based clouds, maybe even some VMware uh, uh, stack clouds as well. And, and you could, through one, see the workloads, deploy them. That's how you really get a continuous delivery pipeline going. It's APIs for developers, but a single pane of glass for IT. And scale, as that's you were right. talking that's about it. before, That's Michael. what's key. It's working now. So you brought up VMware, VMware killer when you mentioned <laughs> it. So I'll bring up the VMware question. So um, back in the day, VMware ecosystem was really robust. Yeah. Some are saying it's on the decline. We'll see that. Uh, what's the update there? VMworld, the Cube will be there again this year. Um, but they made, for every one of their partners, they made $10 for every dollar mm. VMware book. So they threw off a lot of cash, which is great for the ecosystem, yeah. it, you know, feeds the, uh, feeds, the, feeds the beast, if you will. How are you guys, Bobby, doing that with your partners? And how do you see Docker, for instance, enabling things like that? And how does that all, you have to do some sort of economic advantage for your partners. Can you share some insight yeah. into what you guys yeah. offer? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. So in addition to, you know, the, the terms around helping it be attractive to skill up and, and trans, you know, our partners are transforming as well. Most of them have been resellers. You know, they want to climb the stack now, they want to be more relevant to their customers, so scaling up does come with cost, and one of the big things we're doing is working on go-to-market with them. Actually bringing them, bringing them opportunities, bringing them into deals. In the case of like with, 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 with uh, Nokia, right, the ability to, to, to go in with them, work on uh, accounts together. These are major, really large, significant uh, IT transformations. Uh, with our other partners as well, scaling them up, Getting, you know, bringing them so into deals. Are they deals. wrapping services around? They're monetization service wrappers? Yeah, they're know? actually building hosts that back up as a service, other kinds of service offerings that they build and, and run themselves that we will actually sell through our go-to-market channels um, or they'll deploy on site that, you know, most of our business, you know, 70% goes through the channel, right? Oh, is so, there a number? Can you share a number? $10? I don't have the number. <laughs> Michael, how, how, I can't say the number. How, yeah. does the, how does the ecosystem build around it? How do they make money with Helion? Is it the services, is it the apps? We, we deploy, um, uh, we sell software licenses. So as Helion scales out, we get more workloads on the system, then we're going to sell more software licenses. But the ecosystem's critical for us because when you're talking about building a private cloud and you're talking about building an open private cloud, which is getting away from the vendor lock that exists today, which is why people are driving to some of these open source products, it means that a lot of products have to come together and work well together. And so it, usually it's the, it's the OpenStack distribution that's, that's like Helion that's leading that ecosystem. We're a part of that. And then we get interaction with a lot of other components uh, as, as a part of that ecosystem that helps build an end solution to the customer. And we have 360 now cloud builder partners. We had 30 18 months ago. We'll have 3,000 in 18 more months, right? We're transforming them and they're building new businesses, higher margin services, and growing their and companies. How do you see the CSC, uh, Spinco, whatever we want to call that, affecting is you had basically a built-in consumer right. of you know, your, your stuff. They're one of like Antonio Neri's <laughs> biggest customers, right? <laughs> Probably, right? How will that shake out, do you think? And of course, CSC has a strong relationship with AWS, that's you know, goodness, but, yeah, but yeah. talk well, about I think, that a little Well, I think it's about focus, as Meg always says, right? It's about, it's about having companies that can really focus on their best thing, right? So, you know, we're going to have a growth, a, high growth, a growth company, focus on software and hardware and infrastructure and services. I think outsourcing, they're coming together with CSC, they're building a, you know, they'll be a big partner of ours, but we're also partnering with Accenture and others as well. So I think it's going to allow everybody to be the best at what they do. We'll have relationships, contractual and partnership relationships, but it will allow maybe a bit more comp competition. Probably very, very healthy. You feel healthy with the SIs, the, the big power SIs? You guys in good shape with those guys? Yeah, I mean, Price Waterhouse, Cooper's just uh, received a partner of the year for cloud. Uh, they're here in a big way, Accenture's here. Yeah, I think they're, they're big as well, but you know, our enterprise services and, 
and they're, they're here in a big way too, and I think that'll continue. Some of the influencers out there, last question, wants to know about the update on Eucalyptus, AWS, that relationship. Yeah. Can you give an update? Yeah, so our strategy is to partner with public cloud providers, uh, many of them. Uh, Eucalyptus has a great story. You know, we're obviously, we go to reInvent, we're a big part of that. You know, I think there will be, uh, you'll see more to come on the public cloud partnership, partnership space. Well, we'll be at reInvent, uh, Note to the Cube, watch. We'll be at DockerCon as well, uh, coming up very quickly. I think next week or the week after. Thank you. Okay, so many events coming up. Uh, guys, <laughs> thanks so much, appreciate it. Uh, thanks for spending the time. Yeah, thank you. I'll be Patrick Michael Loomis here on the Cube. This is the Cube, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>